In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about respiratory physiology. And in particular, we're going to talk about the oxygen disassociation curve. The oxygen disassociation curve tries to depict the nature of hemoglobin with differing oxygen saturations that provide different partial pressures of oxygen within the arterial and venous circulation. So we can start off saying what happens when the hemoglobin is 100% saturated with oxygen or the saturation of oxygen is 100% for example in the arterial system we can extrapolate from the graph and say that the partial pressure of oxygen is approximately 99 millimeters of mercury worth of partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial system in which the oxygen saturation is 100%. And we can also show that, as we did previously, saying that if you were to take an arterial blood gas sample, which helps to measure the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the arterial systemic circulation, we can say that when the arterial hemoglobin that's within the red blood cells is 100% saturated with oxygen, the partial pressure of oxygen is roughly 99 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure. And that can be depicted on the oxygen disassociation curve saying that when the oxygen is 100% saturated, or rather when the hemoglobin is 100% saturated with oxygen, if we follow the curve down, or across, and then down, we can extrapolate that the arterial pressure of oxygen is approximately 99 millimeters of mercury, like we said here, 100% and 99 millimeters of mercury worth of partial pressure. And now this shows that what if the arterial saturation dropped from 100% to 90%? In fact, that the hemoglobin within the red blood cells is no longer 100% saturated with oxygen, but instead is saturated 90%. If we were to follow across and extrapolate down, we can say that the content or the partial pressure of oxygen within the arterial system in which the hemoglobin is 90% saturated gives us a partial pressure of 60 millimeters of mercury of oxygen partial pressure. And if we were to go further and say that now the hemoglobin is saturated 75% of oxygen, we extrapolate across and down, we can say that the partial pressure of oxygen is around 40 millimeters worth of mercury of pressure. And if we were to look at the illustration previously, and it showed the oxygen saturation of the blood within the pulmonary circulation just prior to going to the capillary system or the alveolar capillary system which is considered the mixed venous gas tensions we said that the oxygen saturation was 75 percent meaning that hemoglobin is saturated about 75 percent with oxygen and the partial pressure of oxygen within that venous circulation is about 40 millimeters of mercury worth of partial pressure. And again, that's depicted in the oxygen disassociation curve. It would 75% of oxygen, or rather 75% of the hemoglobin, is saturated with oxygen. And if we were to follow that sideways and down, we can see that the partial pressure is approximately 40 millimeters of mercury worth of partial pressure of oxygen. And in this case, this happens to be the venous. Uh, oxygen saturation, a partial pressure within the venous circulation. And if we were to continue with the saturation to 50%, we can extrapolate that approximately 26.6 millimeters of mercury worth of partial pressure within the circulation. And lastly, around 30% in which the hemoglobin molecules approximately 30% saturated with oxygen gives us a partial pressure of approximately 18 to 20 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure.
we could look at this clinically saying that the arterial system is generally around 100% saturated and we would expect that the partial pressure is approximately 99. When the oxygen saturation of the arterial system drops to about 90%, we know that we can estimate or guesstimate or extrapolate that the partial pressure of the arterial system is now around 60. And any further decline of the oxygen saturation past 90% will most likely put us in a hypoxic uh, situation. Because as the gas tensions decrease, as it moves from the arterial system into the cells and finally getting to the mitochondria, the oxygen becomes a deficit or deficient in which aerobic metabolism no longer can provide sufficient amount of ATP to drive the electrical activity or the physiological processes within the cells. And likewise, uh, a mixed venous oxygen saturation is generally on 75%, and the 30% usually represents the coronary circulation oxygen saturation, in which there's a high extraction ratio of the coronary circulation, which we talked about previously, in which the oxygen supply is approximately 35 ml, and the high extraction of oxygen of about 23 mLs of oxygen per minute being extracted from the 35 leaves about 30% saturation of the hemoglobin molecule saturated with oxygen once the blood leaves the coronary circulation. And the partial pressure within the coronary circulation once the oxygen has been extrapolated, extracted is roughly 18 to 20 millimeters of mercury worth of partial pressure. So the overall curve of the oxygen disassociation curve tries to represent the nature of hemoglobin as different saturations of oxygen bind to the hemoglobin molecule. And there's a shift of the oxygen disassociation curve to the right or to the left depending on certain clinical environments. For example, during hypo, hyperthermia or acidosis, increased levels of 2,3-DPG and even pregnancy shifts the ox, oxygen disassociation curve to the right in which the oxygen readily is released from the hemoglobin molecule in order to supply the peripheral tissue of oxygen. And on the contrary, the oxygen disassociation curve shifts to the left in conditions such as hypothermia, alkalosis, decreased levels of 2,3-DPG, and fetal hemoglobin, in which the oxygen that's bound to the hemoglobin is less readily released from the hemoglobin molecule because of the increased oxygen affinity towards the hemoglobin molecule. So this represents the nature and characteristics of hemoglobin as it binds to the oxygen with differing oxygen saturations and likewise representing different partial pressures of oxygen within the arterial and the venous circulation.